progressives who don't even understand what they voted for. And gentlemen, we have another case of Hussein Obama versus Hussein Obama on delaying or defunding Obamacare. And first, what I have to play is a little soundbite by a White House spoke stooge, Jay Carney, uh, where he lays it out for us that Hussein Obama will oppose anything that delays or defunds Obamacare. And this is where we're going to get into some hypocrisy. Uh, go ahead, Jay. The floor is yours, little man. In dire straits during the recession. Uh, and uh, we are continuing to make progress. There is certainly more work to do. And allowing a government shutdown for ideological reasons would be hugely counterproductive. Uh, so when it comes to, we haven't seen any bill yet. Uh, our position, obviously, is that we will not accept anything that delays or defunds Obamacare. Okay, so this pencil neck geek makes it clear that they are not going to accept anything that delays Obamacare. So that would, that makes me wonder, when Hussein said back on August 9th, during a press conference, with respect to health care, I didn't simply choose to delay this on my own. Speaking of the employer mandate primarily and even the out-of-pocket contribution limits, those were also delayed in the reporting requirements for Hussein Obamacare, delayed uh, from January 1st, 2014 till January 1st, 2015, unilaterally, I might add, and illegally, which we will get to in a minute. But Hussein said, with respect to health care, I didn't simply choose to delay this on my own. This was in consultation with businesses all across the country who were scared as hell of this mammoth piece of garbage. I mean, uh, many of whom are supportive of the Affordable Care Act because it's crony capitalism. That's just one facet of it. He said, this is a tweak that doesn't go to the essence of the law, really. That's, that's quite a big tweak. Delaying the employer mandate and the reporting requirements and the out-of-pocket contribution limits for one year. And he says, but he assures me, we have the executive authority to do so unilaterally as I did in Libya, and we did so. Because I don't care about the Constitution, just as bad as my predecessor. So we got that line of uh, bullshit, I think's the best way to put it. Then he says, we're listening to businesses about the health care law. If you're listening to the American people, uh, Hussein, you would uh, scuttle this. And so he says, we have heard the concern that the reporting called for under the law about each worker's access to enrollment in health insurance requires new data collect and collection systems and coordination. It's going to be a lot of data collection, folks. So we plan to revamp the entire dang thing and simplify the reporting process. Some of this detailed reporting may be unnecessary for businesses. Blah, blah, blah. In the interim, suspend reporting for 2014 unilaterally. Because last time I checked, Okay, I can't get my head ahead of myself. Last time I checked, Congress was a lawmaker. But anyways, then he also says he's giving businesses more time to comply. Since employer responsibility payments can only be assessed based on this new reporting, payments won't be collected for 2014. But that doesn't, that doesn't uh, focus on individuals. Uh, that requirement's not on individuals. You still have to have health care. But a big business isn't under the employer mandate for this year, for next year, excuse me, but you are as an individual. That's really fair, isn't it? So if the government doesn't have to follow the rules of their own legislation, I don't, right? And here's Michael Cannon. Uh, first, I'm going to go to Mike Lee, actually. Senator Mike Lee was talking to Terrence Jeffrey about this, about Hussein unilaterally uh, delaying this. And Terrence says, now I looked into the law, actually pulled up the actual language of the law, and it says the following. The amendments made by this section shall apply to periods beginning after December 31st, 2013. That exact language, word for word, is the end of the, at the end of the individual mandate. So this mandate that John Roberts held up, says though, it says those exact words. And it's at the end of the employer mandate, says those exact words. When Congress enacts a law that it says shall apply to periods beginning after December 31st, 2013. The president signs that law, and the Supreme Court of the United States upholds that piece of garbage as constitutional. Does the president 
have the discretion simply not to enforce that law in some interest? And Mike Lee responded, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have the authority under the statute. The statute is utterly inconsistent with, it, with that. And with this kind of statute, where it specifies the date it shall take effect, which was three and a half years after its enactment, that's the date on which it's supposed to be implemented. He doesn't have constitutional authority or statu statutory authority to do this. Having set that predicate, the branch of government that calls itself chiefly responsible for overseeing constitutionality, they made it okay now for the executive branch to rewrite it as well. And the executive branch now has rewritten Obamacare on at least two occasions. Once, early in the first week of July, when it said it would not be enforcing the employer mandate, at least not for the first year it was supposed to take effect. And then later that first week of July, when the Hussein administration said that it would not be enforcing those provisions of Obamacare requiring income verification for those going on the exchanges and receiving subsidies from the federal government. Then Terrence Jeffrey asked, Senator Lee, the Constitution requires a president when he is inaugurated to take an oath or an affirmation in which he says he will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the U.S. Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution says he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Given his sworn duty to take care that the laws shall be faithfully executed, did the president have a constitutional duty to enforce this law as of December 31st, 2013? Senator Lee says, well, yes, I think he did. And if he came to the point, which he apparently did, where he said this just isn't possible, it isn't plausible, I can't do it, then it is his duty to come back to Congress and say, okay, look, as a practical matter, I can't do this. Let's work something out. Let's change the law so we can be in compliance with the law. Jeffrey, Terrence Jeffrey replies, so let's amend the law, but by refusing to enforce the law he himself signed, that has a direct mandate. He is violating his oath and he is violating Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution. Lee replies, yeah, I think that's right. And the problem is compounded even further when he rewrites it and he says, I'm now going to decide how I am going to enforce this. I'm going to enforce these provisions selectively. I'll enforce those provisions that I want to enforce, but won't enforce those provisions that I think are either impossible to implement or more likely provisions that if enforced would cause political harm to my political party. That's what happened here and that's why there are appropriate ways for Congress to deal with this problem. So he can't, if he's going to delay the employer mandate, he has to go to Congress now, Grant, I'm not a fan of Obamacare, but the employer mandate, unfortunately, is law. I'm not a fan of it, so it has to begin on January 1st, 2014. And if it has to be delayed, Hussein has to go to Congress, say, hey, I'd like you guys to do this. The exact legislation either has to pass the House and Senate. If not, it goes to a conference report. And then they have to pass it out of conference report, and a majority of the House and Senate have to agree to it and it would have to contain that delay because he cannot do it on his own. He does not have executive authority to do so. Michael Cannon came to the same conclusion. Has Congress given Treasury the authority to waive the penalties? The answer is no. The employer mandate penalties unequivocally take effect on January 1st, 2014, and Obamacare gives the Treasury Secretary no authority to postpone their imposition. Every element of the employer mandate demonstrates that it takes effect in 2014. The section creating the employer mandate even contains an effective date. The amendments made by this section shall apply to months beginning after December 31st, 2013. The statute gives the Treasury Secretary the authority to collect these penalties on an annual, monthly, or other periodic basis as the Secretary may prescribe. It does not allow the Secretary to waive the imposition of such penalties except in one circumstance. Section 1332 authorizes the Treasury Secretary to waive the employer mandate, but only as part of a state-specific waiver, and only if the state enacts a law that would provide equally comprehensive health insurance to as many residents, and only if that law would impose no additional cost to the federal government, and only if there is a meaningful level of public input over the waiver and its approval, and even then, not until 2017. So Congress made it very clear under what circumstances parts of Obamacare could be waived and when. And the unilateral delaying of this employer mandate does not fit those parameters. Has Congress given Treasury, Treasury the authority to waive the reporting requirement? Again, no. The statute is clear. 
these reporting requirements take effect in calendar years beginning after 2013 and periods beginning after December 31, 2013. The statute contains no language authorizing Treasury to waive those requirements, so they're just, uh, this is out of control. They have no authority to do this. Uh, this is dictatorial, possibly. I think that might be the best way to describe that. And in closing, folks, uh, Michael Cannon here uh, reports, within hours, and I agree with this, within hours of announcing its illegal decision to delay the employer mandate because Congress would have to pass that delay, the uh, Hussein administration on July 3rd asked a federal court to block a legal challenge to the mandate, Liberty, Liberty University versus Geithner, based on that delay. Today, the administration filed similar requests in Pruitt versus Sebelius and Halvig versus Sebelius. These actions confirm speculation that blocking these lawsuits, and especially Pruitt and Halvig, may have been the whole purpose of the delay. Uh, and take a look at uh, the video on your screen that focuses, it's a good short video, on the uh, way a lot of this lawmaking has been kicked. And this didn't start with Obama, so don't you know say Obama's the first guy to do this. Or, no, he isn't. It's just getting worse and worse. But kicking uh, rulemaking to unelected bureaucrats by Congress is illegal. It's like I've, all, I've said to several progressives and never gotten a uh, satisfactory answer. Obamacare was still being written years after it was supposedly passed because all these rules are being issued by HHS. Now, what could happen is HHS could say, hey, here's these rules, we want you to ensconce them in Hussein Obamacare. And Congress would have to pass that, which would be fine. And, you know, if both chambers of Congress pass those rules, uh, then it's inserted in there. But that's not the way it is. These bureaucrats are... Uh, making law and they're not supposed to make law so that is unconstitutional and as I've said the um, delaying this employer mandate and the reporting requirements and the out-of-pocket uh, costs cost limits delaying all that till January 1st 2015 is unconstitutional and a lot there's a lot of these lawsuits so I'm not going to get into those because it go on and on but they did, that's part of the reason this decision was made. I think they wanted to hamstring challenges to it, especially with the health care exchanges and uh, the fact that a state would have to, the state has to start that health care exchange itself. The statute makes it clear that the IRS can't get involved with doling out tax credits and levying penalties until the state does that. Federal government can't come in and say, all right, we're making one for you. And then the IRS comes in and doles out tax credits and levies penalties. The statute uh, does not say that. That's part of another of the numerous challenges to Hussein Obamacare. And they're doing what they can to railroad these challenges and slow them down. So get on the stick, folks. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Have a nice day and don't thank me now.